What's up, everybody? It's Hank here with Smoke Break Podcast. Very excited about this episode. Uh, the a brand new heavyweight to the UFC roster, Juan Adams. Juan Adams is, if you have not watched him, he won a contract from Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series with a dominant performance. He got in there and just, you know, had his way, vicious ground and pound, and he looks to be a great heavyweight prospect. Hello, Adam. How, or, hello, Juan. How are you? I'm great, man. How are you doing? Pretty good, myself. Um, so you, you said earlier you're in the coffee shop, and I asked if you were in a camp, and you said no, but... What is your walk around weight? Just your normal everyday life walk around weight? Uh, uh, right now I'm uh, actually 297, so I usually walk around in the 295 to 300 range. Uh, we're working on that now. I'll probably try and get my walk around walk around rate back around 285, 290. Right, and I've said in many interviews before, and I've st- stated my opinion multiple times, that I believe there should be no limit to heavyweight. I believe, you know, like Brock Lesnar, they made make him cut to 265. You're an example. Why are you making somebody as big as you and you're fighting a heavyweight cut weight, you know? It should be like 210 to 310. And somebody said that they didn't agree with that, but maybe 200 to 300. You know, maybe just from a flat 200 to 300 even. But you would get somebody in there that would debate, well, what would you do if somebody weighed in right at 200 and somebody weighed in right at 300? That's a 100-pound advantage. But I just think they should not make heavyweights cut weight. Yeah, I, I 100% agree, but you know, it does eliminate a lot of the slobs and, you know, the less talented people that in there. So <laughs> it's a small sacrifice, but I'm down to do it. And if they ever do make a, a super heavyweight class, I'll try and fight in both and uh, be a two-division champ, you know? Right. I believe uh, a couple of heavyweights have been in that same bracket, you know, where they had to cut weight. Lesnar comes to mind. I'm not sure if Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt probably had to a little bit here and there. But I'd say a bunch of heavyweights are like yourself might not have to cut too much, but ten or fifteen pounds for a for a hundred and fifty five pound man ain't so tough. Ten or fifteen pounds for a three hundred pound man might be a little tougher. Right, right, right. But for sure, uh we'll talk a little bit about your contender series fight. It was uh, I forget his name. Do you remember the guy's name that you fought? Oh uh, yeah, it was uh Sean Teed. Teed. I remember his last name, but I didn't remember the first name. Very entertaining fight, you know, for it only lasted uh, one round, but I believe every single fight you've had has only been one round, correct? You've never been out of the first round? Uh, yeah, as an amateur, uh, my first two fights uh, went to the second round, but that's because they were only three-minute rounds, so. Uh, but n- no, none, none of them none have lasted pro. five minutes. Huh? None is a pro, though. No, no, none is a pro. Yeah, and... Uh, devastating ground to pound i mean you could see he was shooting one of the more memorable fights for me or moments in the fight because it was such a quick fight i just watched it this morning i watched it twice over and over again to get a good you know read of it and you he shot on you and you hit him with a beautiful wizard where you you know you defended it and he was on there for a few minutes and you defended it the whole time and even the commentators and everybody was thinking, you know, the thing, that you looked tired and that you were gassing. But just as soon as you got on top of him, you landed shot after shot after shot with brutal ground and pound. And like you said in your interview, you couldn't believe that he was taking some of them and still fighting. But ultimately, you wound up finish, ended up finishing him. What was that like for you? Do you think he was a little bit nervous? Do you think uh, you showed exactly what you wanted to do? What was your game plan and how did you see it going? Uh, that's how that fight went exactly uh, how I saw it going. That was our, our game plan from the get go was to you know show the improvement on our feet, uh, stuff every shot that he had. If and we were only going to keep it on the ground when we were looking to finish. You know, I wanted uh, the first time. You know, I, I had him on his back. I actually let him up because I wasn't done yet. You know, I wanted to show more. He wanted to make sure that he was tired. He wasn't going to be trying to do anything uh, tricky off the ground. I don't watch any of this film, but my coach has told me, you know, don't stay on the ground until we tell you it's okay to. So they told me to let him up. I let him up. Uh, I can definitely tell he was nervous, you know. 
Uh, I'd be nervous fighting me too. I can't really blame him on that one. So uh, it is what it is. But I was I was just in I was the in better physical shape. I was bigger, faster, and stronger than him. And he just kind of didn't really know what to expect. So. Yeah, one thing immediately that sticks out about you is, like you said, your size. And, I mean, heavyweight, when you think heavyweight, you think of a big guy in any way, but you tower over some of the biggest heavyweights, like six foot five, cutting to get to 265. I mean, there's you're a, there's heavyweights and then there's heavyweights. Right. But, yeah, for sure, your ground and pound was on point in that one. Do you come from a wrestling background? Yes, uh, I actually wrestled Division One. I. I wrestled for Virginia Military Institute. Uh, I wrestled there for five years. I got injured one year, and I, they gave me a medical redshirt, so I stayed a fifth. And um, I started wrestling my freshman year of high school and just kind of took off from there. Uh, and So, yeah, that, that's my background, just folk-style wrestling. So, and actually, and I'm sure you you would say the same thing, and a lot of people do. That's the best base to start an MMA, you know, careers with wrestling. You can be a good taekwondo striker, you can be a good kickboxer, but if you get in there with somebody who's a jiu-jitsu black belt, that's going to get you down. You could be in a lot of trouble. The good base. It's always good to have a good wrestling base in MMA. Right. Right. So I'm sure that you uh, e- wrestling became very easy to you. How about the striking? Do you think the the striking department is a lot more difficult to learn than say jujitsu or wrestling positions that you might already know from being a wrestler? Um, jujitsu uh, comes a little bit more naturally. The striking, uh, the big difference is there's a, a huge difference in footwork between wrestling uh, wrestling movement and uh, any striking art movement. So. It's, it's hard, and you pick up anything after a certain age. It's going to take a while to get used to. So, uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of significant growth in my striking. People have to realize I've only been doing this for two years now. So it's, uh, it's, it's different, and it's hard to pick up. You keep doing it. I keep going. I keep training. I keep getting better and better. But... There's obviously some of the nuances and intricacies that I'm not going to get having only two years of experience in it, you know? Yeah, I put that down in my notes here. A less than two years or right at about two years of MMA experience, that is crazy when you think about it because you show such such growth in your MMA career so far. And I know we've only – a lot of people might not be too familiar with you except, you know, like hardcore, hardcore fans like myself. But if you watched the Contender Series, you knew right away by that performance that this guy could be a top prospect in the heavyweight division. He's just got to got to get got to get him in there, kind of like you know they feed their rising stars to to better fighters too quick. You know, like the Darren Till, Tyron Woodley, you know. Uh, Sean O'Malley, Israel Alsanya, you don't want to take somebody who's new, who could be a star, and throw them in the fire too quick. Right, right. And uh, they also have to realize I only have four pro bouts now, so there's a lot of guys that commissions won't approve me to fight. So, you know, I, I'm okay with fighting anyone. I believe that with the right with the right game plan and the right training camp, there's nobody that can beat me, so... I'm just ready to go. Um, I want to fight, obviously. I want to get paid, so <laughs> I got to fight. But it is what it is. I got to just take my time, keep working, keep getting better. And when my time comes, all I can do is be ready for it. Yeah, I heard in an interview you said that you train with Curtis Blades. Yeah, yeah, I used to. Um, I trained uh, for a few camps up there. They would fly me out there, train for about a week or two. Um but, you know, now Overeem's out there, so they don't really need me. <laughs> Where are you Curtis train now? Is, I'm training only in Houston now, so I'm at uh, Paradigm Training Center and the Fight Lab out in Katy. And uh, then I do all my strength and conditioning with a different coach all together. So I'm in a few different places, but Houston's my base of operations. So Yeah, definitely. I, I've got a question, too, about USADA. Since what we talked a little bit about off-air – uh, you know, how they uh, they haven't even offered you a fight yet. You know, you won back in August, I believe, was the when you won the Contender Series. 
Yeah, July 31st. That's oh, yeah, uh, July, July. Early July. Late, yeah, late July, early August. I remember that. And they haven't, have they not even contacted you or mentioned anything yet? No, I haven't heard anything about a fight yet at all. Uh, I was hoping to fight before the end of the year, but uh, probably not going to happen at this rate. I have been tested by USADA though. So I was gonna say, a, do they immediately yeah. start testing when you won, when you won the can when the when you won the contract when that contract is signed and everything's you know handled through the lawyers? Do you immediately enter the USADA pool? Uh yeah, I think so. I mean, by the end of that week, I had already taken their class, uh, listened to the to the instructional, and filed my whereabouts through the next uh, three months. So. Yeah, I talked to Jason Knight about it, uh, about USADA, and he says they you have to fill out forms about where you're going to be, you know, your whereabouts, like you said, if you're going to go on vacation. Um, it seems like it's a lot, and obviously there's different rules, you know, like for, you can smoke weed the day before or the day after, just not 24 hours before or 24 hours after. You can take CBD now, like there's some exceptions, but... Do you overall agree that you saw it as a good thing because it keeps dirty fighters? You don't want you, who's clean, to fight somebody who's on steroids. Exactly, yeah. I think you saw it as a great thing. Uh, it's great for the sport. Like I said, you sign a contract to work for a company. And when you sign that contract, you agree to the rules and regulations, no matter how ridiculous you think they are. Um, you know, with you saw it, they list everything you can and can't take. If you don't know or you're unclear, you can send them whatever it is, and they'll make sure whether it's good or not. So there's no point, no reason to fail a test or fail a whereabouts thing. You know, it's a pain, yeah. Every time I want to go somewhere new or if I'm going on a date or, you know, I plan a last-minute trip, I have to file it with USADA and let them know where I'm going to be. But... At the end of the day, that's what I signed up for. So, yeah, and one of your div the division you're in too, heavyweight. It seems Usada pops up a lot in that weight class because it is filled with older guys like a Overeem, like a Mark Hunt. He's never test positive, but we're Doom. I'm sure you've heard about Fabricio. We're Doom being gone for two years. There's a lot. It seems that they suspect they suspect the older guys taking it more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that, I mean, it's, it's natural, you know. As you get older, your testosterone production decreases. It, it's a little harder to stay in the gym as much as you want to. So a lot of guys will go look for that extra help, uh, especially if you're not training properly, which I feel most fighters don't train properly. They either overtrain or undertrain, and they completely neglect athletic training altogether. So it... Uh, just when you're not training properly, you got to look for those extra edges to make your body ready to go. Yeah, you can recovery is harder when you get older, especially for bigger guys. You know, recovery, you get sore easier. But the, the weight class you are in, heavyweight, it seems to be one of those weight classes where a, a brash new contender can bust out maybe three, four wins, and you're right there, you know, like – Normal divisions like may it say a 155, 170, you'll see guys with six, seven fight win streaks that aren't even in the top ten. Heavyweight isn't really the deepest pull. Like you, you've got champion through seven maybe, and then it starts getting a little weird towards the end. Heavy, it's, your division is one of those divisions where you rattle off four quick knockouts, you're right up there, right up there with the top of the world. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and, uh, you know, I'm not super worried about it, like I've said before. I've got no problem fighting everyone in this division. Uh, I'm not worried about anyone in this division. I don't think anyone is really on my level. So, uh, you know, there's some guys that, that could be close with the proper training, but I look at that as fun, you know. That's why I did this. I did this to have fun, and uh, all these fights just look like fun matchups for me, you know. There's a... Uh, not too many people I, I have any personal vendetta against. Or right. I'm really trying to, like, I, I want desperately to fight. I just want a fight, so it'll be anyone, and I don't really care. Anybody come to mind? I've seen an interview where you said Albini. That would be a fun one. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I, I just like Albini because, um, like my coach said, he's not really bad anywhere. So it would force me to kind of take the entire fight more seriously really 
prepare more in each level, and I wouldn't really have a time to take a break anywhere. So with my last opponent, you know, I knew my wrestling was better than his, and that was his best area. So when it went to that, I knew, okay, this is break time for me. And <clears throat> that's how I've handled a lot of my fights lately, or all of my fights. So, yeah, Albini would be a lot of fun. I think uh, at the end of the day, he has way more fights than I do. So I don't think that would get cleared. Um, so I thought Chris De La Rosa would be a great fight. He's only 5-2, and two, I believe. I don't really know what he does. I know he's old, and I know he's 5-2. and two. So he has less than 10 fights. I've got four. That would be a perfect mashup. Rashad uh, Coulter comes to mind. Oh, yeah, Rashad Coulter. That would be a good one, too. Uh, he's, uh, he's got good power. He's got decent striking, uh, but he's, he's pretty small. He's a little guy. He's a little mm-hmm. fella, so... I think that'll be fun, you know. It's like you know, there's a lot of fun matchups stylistically they could uh, really easily make. And I said, I don't care who I fight or when I fight them. I just I'll fight them all. I just want to fight, you know. I love this. One more name comes to mind, and I've got a lot of flack about this, and a lot of people immediately when you say his name, you you get hate, and it's understandable hate. Greg Hardy, uh, I I have to mention him. You know, you both come from the Contender Series. If they – you said anybody, so obviously if they offered you Greg Hardy that you would do it. It kind of makes sense, too, if you think about it. You both come from the Contender Series. You're both heavyweights with knockout power, great wrestling. I think, you know, what? first of all, what's your opinion on Greg Hardy? I could see your facial expression when I said his name. So, so is, is that somebody that you just really want an extra punch in the face? <laughs> I don't even want to punch him in the face. I just want people to stop, like – Hyping him up, he's not good at all. He's fought bums. Like, everyone he's fought is a bum. I I firmly believe that any of my last three opponents not only destroys Greg Hardy, but destroys any of his opponents as well. You look at his, they want to hype up his amateur career, uh, saying, oh, well, he had less than two minutes of ring time and three fights. I'm like, yeah, well, if you match me up with a 44-year-old, a 42-year-old, and a 37-year-old, I'm going to, it'll be the exact same result. You know, anyone can do that. That's not hard. And then you look at his profiles. He fought a guy that walks around at 240. He's not even a real heavyweight as his first one. His second fight was against a guy that weighed about 280. Well, you know, they, they weighed the same, but that guy clearly wasn't an athlete, man. That dude needs to be playing. He needs to be playing anything. He needs to hit the gym for about two years, you know, (laughs) get an athletic build and change weight classes. That dude probably could have fought at 185. And, you know, you look at his more recent opponent, the guy that he's got coming up now, on sure dog, it says he's 0-1. So his opponents are getting actively worse as they progress his career. And that's not how it's supposed to be. You know, you look at the guys I fought. My second opponent was 4-3, and three, right? Winning so record. With, yeah, I wrecked him, right? Yeah, he was 4-3, and three, though. He's, uh, after that fight, he dropped the weight class. So my second, my third opponent, for my third fight, I fought a guy with 15 pro fights and pro boxing fights. And that guy was eight and seven. So, yeah, he wasn't undefeated, but it was still a step up in competition from my last opponent. So each of my opponents has been a step up in competition. They're doing the opposite with Hardy, and I think it's ridiculous. And it's obvious they're trying to build him, trying to give him easy opponents and pad his record. So they can justify signing him. But, you know, I know plenty of guys on a local circuit that would beat him. He has one thing only, and that's he's fast, right? He's pretty fast, and he hits hard. He has zero gas tank, zero grappling ability, and I think his knees are very weak. You know, I think if you leg kick him twice, he'd be done. And that's just one way to beat him. Uh, So he relies on his athletic ability. He's over the age of 30. That's going to deteriorate more and more as time goes on. So I'm not super worried about him. If they ever do give me that fight, it's going to be a very easy win for me. And, uh, yeah, I'd, I wouldn't even end it in the first. I'd make him suffer for 13 minutes. And <laughs> yeah, just, I just, like it, then I would end him. <laughs> I agree with you a lot, a lot, a lot what you said. Uh, he definitely has a padded record. You can see that they're trying to build him up and trying to, to justify signing him. <laughs> But like you said, I've I've stated before, leg kicks are a huge weakness for him. If somebody really went out and utilized leg kicks, he might be in some deep shit. And you got 
guys like you who, you know, if you get hit with a good punch or two, you're not stupid. You're not just going to stand there and go out like a warrior. No, I'm going to take him down and ground and pound his face in. I exactly. So I'm not I'm not worried about him. If they ever did give me that fight, it'd be an easy payday for me. And I, I just... He's not he's not on my radar at all. I'm going to keep clowning him and I'm going to keep calling out the bullshit that they call fights for him because they're not real fights. They're giving him bums and that's not cool. Yeah, so it seems a lot of people in the MMA world automatically, you know, are not a fan and you could tell he's got some some knockouts like he's got knockout power, but those are against amateurs. They're against people who probably shouldn't be fighting him. He needs to be tested. If you really want to promote him as a killer, give him a test. Let him go out there and somebody will test him and see if he can withstand it or not. Right. But yeah, you know, I feel if he fought my last opponent, if him and Sean T fought, I think Sean T finishes him in the first round. Oh, yeah, just for grappling alone. You know, we haven't seen no grappling from Hardy. I've, I've Maybe some takedown defense, but... I mean, you would a football. Obviously, you've you got power and strength from football and know how to hit and know how to, you know, go for a double leg. But that doesn't necessarily help you when you hit the ground. It, it, yeah, you can stuff maybe one or two, but if he gets you down, then what? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, are you following and are you up to date with Connor Khabib? Uh, I'm not really following it all that much. You know, I saw a couple clips of the press conference. Um, like I said, that's not really my weight class. Doesn't really concern me too much. Connor has done a lot for the sport. He's brought a lot of new fans to the sport. So um, this fight is good for MMA. Uh, and no matter what the outcome is, it's a win-win for the UFC. So, if you had to lean towards one, I'm sure you've seen highlights of Khabib fight, and I'm sure you've seen you know the Aldo knockout and Connor knockout Eddie. The if you had to lean towards Connor's knockout power. Or Khabib's wrestling, who do you think gets it done? I I think Khabib gets it done just because you know he's never lost before. So why start now? You know, <laughs> he's so definitely I, I like a monster. He's a killer on the ground. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going for. Uh, I think Khabib wins that one. But again, there's a lot of variables to assume. You know, I've never seen Khabib get hit by someone that hits as hard as Connor, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and I don't know what connor has been doing in his off time. You know, he looks to still be in good shape. It looks like he's still moving well, very fluid, and he's always going to have that power. So it just depends on, you know, who shows up that day, really. Yeah, I think it all comes down to, like you said, who ha who's better on that night. I think Connor needs it, but Connor. He's got the Nate fight, you know. He's got the trilogy with Nate that he could do. He's got options. Khabib doesn't have as many options as Connor, but Connor can do whatever he wants. At that press conference yesterday, he seemed extremely pumped, and uh, you said you've seen a little bit of it. Connor, Connor's very out of character for this one. He seems like he genuinely, genuinely hates Khabib. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting to me. Uh, I'm gonna watch it, obviously. So. Yeah, for sure. I think. Do you think it's the most watched pay per view ever, or do you think maybe or no? Uh, yeah, until I'm champ. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, have you? Are you up to date or follow Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, and the, their third fight coming up? No, I mean, I don't want to see it. I have no desire to watch. You know, two older guys go at it. Tito's a great dude. I all the respect in the world for him, what he, what both of these guys have done for the sport, but too old, you know, <laughs> there's, there's two trends of thought. One, like once you get to a certain age or once you get past your prime, why keep doing it? But on the other hand, you know, if they're going to keep paying you, you might as well keep doing it. So you can't blame them for getting a payday, but it's, it's weird to see a 49 year old and a 44 year old or something like that. 49 and 42, 41. They're both in their forties. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we we talked a little bit about off air too. You, your WWE tryout. Now, was you a huge fan of WWE, and are you still a fan of WWE? Uh, actually, I was growing up. Once I hit like high school and college, I didn't really watch too much of it. But I'm a much bigger fan now. 
So um, I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, but it was, it was just a lot of fun. You know, it was one of those things. You know, why not? You know? So they offered me the tryout, and I took it, and it was fun. I got a lot of great experience up there, and maybe one day after I'm done with MMA, well, you'll see me back going for it again. But for right now, I'm very happy with where I am and what I'm doing, and I want to keep doing that. Oh, so they reached out to you. You didn't reach out to them. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy as hell. So who's your favorite wrestler now? If you're up to date now, who do you who do you prefer to watch as of now? I actually like, like watching the little guys go. So, um, huge fan of Leo Rush. Uh, and I also really like, uh, actually, my buddy, the guy that was my roommate for the tryout, is debuting on NXT Live tonight. So, Stacy Irvin Jr., they call him the Wave. So, I, I really want to see what he does. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, so, wrestling's one of those things, too. Like you say, I, I, I almost feel like every boy watched it as a kid. And then when you hit high school, you know, junior high, high school, you kind of fade off a little bit. But then if you, if you watch it, it's not necessarily about fake or real or whatever. It's just entertainment, you know, like, uh, it's just getting entertainment, you know, the shock factor. They're, they're looking for that shock and wow factor. And I believe wrestling is still very, very entertaining to watch. Yeah, exactly. Well, man, that's just about everything. You want to say you got anything else you want to cover before we get off here? Have they? Uh, yeah, just uh, shout out to my sponsors. Uh, you know, Kinetic Cairo, Kinetic Sports Med, Out in League City, uh, Jet Hot Premium Coatings. Thank you for everything that you do. FlemingAttorneys.com. Uh, been my sponsors from the beginning. And, of course, uh, TheCheapMeal.com, my personal trainer and nutritionist, Ryan Casey Baker. Uh, and also a huge shout out to my gyms, the Fight Lab and Paradigm Training Center. Houston versus Houston. How about you and Derek Lewis? Does Derek train there? Derek does train there. Derek's uh, a little bit above my pay grade right now. Though. <laughs> you know? uh, Are you guys? He goes on a losing. He goes friends? on a losing streak. I might get a shot at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you friends though? Like, do you spar together and train each other? Uh, we've trained together a couple times. We never really sparred. Uh, we we have hung out before. You know, we're both. Uh, Mick Mick is a uh, Mick hosts some events sometimes. We're both there, so but we both came through Legacy. So both crazy knockout aggression punchers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were both pretty aggressive. We will definitely throw those hands in there. <laughs> that would be a good one. Well, man, I I thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, and when next uh, when you get your fight booked, hopefully by January, like we said, when you get a fight in there, we'll get you on here again after your fight, have a post fight pre uh, post fight interview. Hell yeah, man! All right, I appreciate it, and I will definitely be watching and supporting you along the way, man. Big fan. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Be careful. Juan Adams, UFC heavyweight. I think he's a good prospect. Good prospect. It's crazy that they haven't even booked a fight for him yet. He had he fought in July, late July, and here we are almost in October. We're going on October, and he still hasn't had a fight yet. I think that's crazy. But uh, they'll get him one soon. I like the Albini fight. I like Rashad Coulter. Rashad Coulter versus uh, Juan Adams is would be a good one. He probably wouldn't say so, but I would like to see him versus Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy, that would test Greg Hardy. If Greg Hardy's going to be successful in an MMA organization like the UFC, I think you give him somebody with overall MMA experience and overall MMA game like Juan. Juan would go out there and he would leg kick him and take him down and test him. Then we would see. We would see r real quick whether he's ready or not. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who watches and everybody who subscribes. This is Hank here with Smoke Break Podcast or Smoke Break MMA, whichever you want to call it. You guys be careful.